Well, what's up guys? It's Daniel from Arms Family Homestead. And as you can see, we're back at the Mill Creek property. Got the uh, disc mulcher hooked up to the skid steer. And as you just saw, I was finally able to get, I say finally, it's actually been several days, but I was able to get the correct hydraulic fitting. Uh, tried two local stores, didn't have it. Had to go back to Ardmore, which is about 40 miles from here to take my wife to go eat lunch and then we did a little shopping and you know it was a half a day trip to get that one hydraulic fitting that was $94 for one hydraulic fitting which wouldn't be too bad except the uh the high flow hydraulic fittings that are on there were about what three weeks old less than a month um that one that spring collar just didn't want to work and I might have got a little rough with some bangy tools you know trying to get it to work and broke it $94 mistake, <sighs> couldn't return it, couldn't take it back, couldn't exchange it because I broke it, even though it wasn't working like it should. But anyways, uh, in the last few videos, you guys saw we had that tree puller and pulled a bunch of trees out in the open fields, kind of tucked them all up in the timber. I'm gonna come back today with the disc mulcher. Have not got to use the disc mulcher here in a couple weeks now. So we're gonna fire this thing up, do some disc mulching, mulch up all those trees that I, uh, that I pulled out of the ground and then probably do a lot more. And I don't know what all else this video will entail, but we'll find something fun to do.
several well let's say i got a couple hours worth of mulching done and i got i did get through all of those 
cedar trees that I'd pulled up and, you know, wanted to come back and mulch. I will say this, I do much prefer <laughs> mulching one at a time on the trees that uh, are still standing. It's just so much easier to bump up to them, bump them, and when they fall away, you can suck them in, you know, the way that thing spins. Having them stacked and piled and laid out with a big root ball, it's just a lot slower and you have to work on the root ball, get all the dirt knocked off and, you know, knock all the roots off and then try to suck one in. And a lot of times I had three or four or five stacked up and you just have to set it down on top of it and just work a little at a time. But got that mess cleaned up. Got a lot of other cleanup done, cleaning up around some trees that had a lot of stuff growing up around them. Whew. Telling you, that machine right there is amazing. I, I know I've said this over and over and over, and uh, this is not in a lot of people's budget. I totally understand that. This is like a dream machine for me. And uh, if this whole social media thing ever falls away, that right there, I feel like would be my career. <laughs> I, I get out here and put that thing to work every day of the week and make a really good income from it. But uh, I think I wanna put it away for the day. I've got about as much done as I can do. It's almost five o'clock and uh, it's time to go do other things. I got a few more things. I need to go show you guys all of my progress. And uh, I got, I did get something in the mail. Like I've got it loaded in the Kubota Sidekick, but let's go drive around, check everything out, see our progress and uh, show you what I got. here by where our ground blind is going to be where it is it's just not you know quite a ground blind yet but the field we're going to be hunting is all of this and this is the one i told you you know i wanted to get all the cedars pulled out of and mulched and i've been working on you know cleaning up the field edges and stuff like that but uh this field is looking way better you can see all the way across it there's no cedar trees left out in the field now there are obviously still a lot of cedar trees on the edges and like there's an old pond over there that doesn't hold water there's still a lot of cedar over there but out in the middle got out around all the main big trees all the hardwoods saved a lot of those and uh, did a lot of cleanup now this field's ready to hunt well probably going to plant a food plot in it first but it is almost ready for deer season just take a little work just to just to kind of get them cleared open just a little bit i'm not trying to take everything out into the timber but the field edges grow up really bad in cedar trees and i cleaned a bunch of that up in some places you can actually see into the timber a little way some you know most of it your view still mostly blocked but on the far side of the field now you can see where the ground blind is going to be up there we're probably just guessing off the top of my head, 250 to, uh, it's probably less than 300 yards all the way across the field. But this should be, should be a good spot to hunt. And I really finally feel like we're starting to make 
progress on this place. It's, uh, it's starting to look a lot different and I just don't know how much that comes across on video because there's still so much that's untouched and a lot will remain untouched. This is kind of one of those areas when I was talking about cedar trees the other day, like there's a gully and just a kind of a rough area that, you know, fire would have a hard time slowing that growth of that cedar tree right there down. So, I, you know, I'm gonna come back and cut a bunch more out, but there are places that uh, cedar trees grow that are just kind of down in gullies and ditches and there's a bunch of rocks out in there and it's just uh, hard to control them everywhere. And I don't, you know, I don't think for a second that I'm gonna be able to cut down every cedar tree on this place but I'm gonna make a solid effort. So I told you guys earlier that I had something arrive. I had a shipment come in. Oh man, didn't know there was packing peanuts in there. Well, let's pull the box out. I had a shipment come in. I should have known there was packing peanuts in there. I don't know why I didn't think about it, but what arrived, if we can get it all out of here without making too big a mess. Um, I got an empty feed tub here. Yeah. Anyway, so what arrived is the windows that I ordered for the deer blind. My uh, shed the blind conversion, you know, like everybody always shed the house, their tiny house deals, you know, whatever. This is a shed the blind conversion. I really don't want to be out here picking up packing peanuts off the ground for the next 30 minutes. I think I can get these out of here. This whole box is filled with packing peanuts. And there's like another box, I don't know if you guys can see it or not. There's another box, you know, inside here. It's like a lifetime supply of packing peanuts. Should have just done this at home. I don't know what I was thinking. They know how to package these things. I will say that. They uh, don't make them easy to get out. Well. Whew. Here's my windows. I ordered four. I'll lay them down here. Show you what we got. So I ordered these windows online. I, I don't know the first thing about them, except they came from a company called the Original Deer Blind Window Company. That's an original name, the original. Their website's uh, thedeerblindwindow.com. Huh. If you're looking for deer blind windows, that's a good name to have, I guess. So two different sizes. They are hinged to open in. Oh, they have clasp so if this was inside the blind as you can see they're barely tinted they're smoked glass as well i think the gray smoke i'm not sure it's got a magnet on here and it just opens up like that so they'll mount on the outside of the ground blind so you'll be hunting you know you're sitting on the inside and you can just pull whichever window up you want should be a fairly easy install you lock those back down Now you could mount them vertically. A lot of bow hunters prefer to shoot, you know, out of a tall window. Um, I don't know that we'll be doing a ton of bow hunting out of here. Houston may do a little crossbow hunting. So horizontal windows will be just fine. And I ordered two different sizes. So we're gonna put one on either side and two on the front. So two narrow windows for the sides of the ground blind. And then two that are exactly, you know, the same window, just wider. And they're not dark tinted, but we can uh, hang a curtain up in there and cover a couple, you know, so that we're not just lighted inside there. But these are really nice little windows. I'm, I'm pretty impressed. I thought they were just going to be kind of a cheap little junky thing, but these are really nice. Now, obviously, I'm not going to be able to get these installed today. But the general gist of it is we'll have two windows on this front side. So one on either side so we can sit side by side and hunt. 
and then one on each end. And I think these things will work perfect. It's uh, really nice. I was just kind of thinking about cutting a hole and buying some plexiglass and putting some piano hinges on there. But uh, I think these will these will be a lot better long term. They'll seal up a little bit better. I put some silicone. I'll put a bead of silicone on the inside of this when we put them on, and uh, I think they'll they'll do just fine. I also bought a uh, a drip edge that mounts above the window, so the small the small ones will go on the side like this. Anyways, I bought a drip edge so that when it's raining and you open the window, the uh, the window will have a just a metal lip that covers it, so that'll help. You know, keep the rain out and protect the wood from rotting around the window too, I guess. Then when you're on the inside, this is kind of the general concept. So two windows in the front wall, one on that side and one on that side. Now that one's going to slide down. I just didn't have, a, a you know, anywhere to set it. But it'll probably come to this stud right here. I'll have to do some, some reworking, some reframing on some studs. But... Uh, probably put it up against both of them up against that center and then we'll have to cut that stud cut that stud and you know redo it basically just frame them in just like you would anything else it's not a whole lot of structure to hold up here honestly but we'll frame around them and make them look decent probably take some of these shelves down just so that uh have a little elbow i may leave the, some of the top shelving but i'll probably take down this will have you know uh, a two before at the bottom of the window more than likely so yeah i think it'll be i think it'll be nice okay next question what kind of skull is this what's it from i thought it was a pig it was just laying upside down in the grass over here i thought it was a pig skull but it has canines see that was it a dog it's way too bulky, it looks like to me, to be a coyote. Almost has that uh, bear look to it. Not, not bear like as in my dog, but like a brown bear, black bear. Don't, we don't have any bears here. Although they're only about an hour east of us. Maybe a pit bull dog? I don't know. You tell me. What do you guys think? Kind of has some dog teeth looking. Hmm. I don't know. Anyways, it's, up. Ah, it's time to get out of here. I'll tell you what, I've never, just to be honest with you, never had a job, a career that I enjoyed as much as I do this. Uh, even, I mean, everything I've done over my life, I'm 14 years in law enforcement, was, uh, it was an interesting career. Working for yourself is a totally different world. And out here working on this piece of land, where I can see progress, where I can see at the end of the day, I did that. That was one of the things as a trooper that uh, that just I struggled with because I, I can you can't see your results at the end of the day in law enforcement. It just it is what it is. And yeah, you might be making a difference, but it, you can't quantify those results. And that's why I always enjoyed gardening when I was a trooper in law enforcement. Gardening was a stress reliever. And I could come home and work, and at the end of the day, I could see my results. I could quantify those results. A lot of you ask why we don't do garden videos anymore. And gardening, honestly, was a stress reliever for me. And early on, it was uh, it was about food. We didn't make a lot of money uh, early in my career. And uh, it helped support our family. It was a side hustle. I sold vegetables, and we put food on our own table. And uh, now I feel like my time is better devoted to other projects than the garden. And I don't feel like I need that stress reliever. Right now my stress reliever is that mulcher. Because when I pull up to and hit a cedar tree and it explodes and disappears, I'm telling you, <laughs> that's a stress reliever right there. Just saying. You know, I'm honestly really surprised at the uh, the extent of the drought we've had this year, and 
this little pond, I know it's not very deep. That water's probably only a, a foot deep out there, but it's still holding water. And that's really just with that one big rain we had in early July, it kind of filled it up. But uh, that's, that's uh, promising for me. I feel like this might could be a decent small pond. Obviously it's not gonna be a fishing pond, but just something for the wildlife to be able to get a drink. So I'd like to be able to come in here, drain this thing, let it dry out and uh, clean it out. I don't, I don't know if I could do it all with the skid steer or not. I mean, you could do a lot of it, don't get me wrong. You could move a lot of dirt with the skid steer, but once that mud dries out, you know, you can just push it over the edge, but I don't know, maybe an excavator or something. I've got a buddy that bought a bulldozer, but it's a way big, way big bulldozer for such a small project here. can tell or not but my mind goes 19,000 different directions all the time on what kind of projects I can do on this place and at home too not just here but uh, getting to the point in my life where, where I can afford this equipment and I know a lot of it I didn't buy I bought the skid steer the implements I didn't buy TYM tractors is a partnership that I've worked my tail off for years on YouTube to earn, uh, I may not have outright bought them with cash, but uh, I promise you, I worked for them. So it's, it's really, it's really um, interesting to be at a point in my life where we can afford to do these things. And then just the fact that this is what I get to do for a living, come out here and work on my own property and make it better, make it worth more and entertain folks like you and uh, give you ideas and inspiration and maybe just a little bit of education, but I don't know. Anyways, I'm gonna put all my stuff up. I gotta clean up my mess, refuel, refuel the skid steer, cause that thing uh, got a spider web or something on it. That skid steer, when I'm using that mulcher on the high flow, full throttle, can easily burn through 70, 80, dollars worth of diesel a day and that's not even running it all day i don't run it for eight hours that gum is it a bug or a spider web anyways it can go through a lot of diesel really fast running full throttle but anyways it's worth it so guys that's all i've got for today thanks for watching i hope you enjoyed it you guys have a great day and as always we'll see you on the next video